Hello, I'm Gajana Devedi, and in this fourth session of the History Simplified series, we are going to discuss about the regional powers in India in 18th century through maps. To start with the discussion of the regional powers, let's start discussing about Avad, Bengal, and Hyderabad. I'm starting with these three powers because these three powers were called successor states. And why they were called successor states? Because they all were established by the Mughal officers themselves. More than that, all the three kingdoms, they copied the same economic and administrative structure that was followed by the Mughals. And that is why in their structure as well, they were like successor states. First, when we talk about Bengal, the independent kingdom of Bengal was established by Murshid Kuli Khan. And later, Bengal became very powerful in times of Nawab Ali Wardi Khan. You have to be careful here to find out that that time Bengal comprised of the areas of Bihar, Bengal and parts of Odisha as well. And Bengal itself was West Bengal and parts of Bangladesh as well. Bengal became very rich and prosperous because of excellent trade that was there as well as good agriculture that was there because of presence of alluvial soil. And that is why the British started as their political base from Bengal because this gave them good access to the resources as well as certainly a very populous area was Bengal that would help them in filling their British army. Again, the independent kingdom of Awadh was established by Sadat Khan. Sadat Khan and later under the rule of Safdarjang. Safdarjang, it became still more prosperous. So another very prosperous kingdom was there that was Avad. Because of the good rule that was given by Sadat Khan and Safdarjang, Lucknow became a big cultural center that time in India as well. Then the third successor state was Hyderabad that was established by Nizam ul Mulk as the independent kingdom. Now, Nizam gradually became the title and all the rulers of Hyderabad they started being called as Nizams. But the first Nizam who established this independent kingdom of Hyderabad was Nizam ul Mulk. Now again he was a very good administrator and in his times Hyderabad would emerge as a big cultural center as well. Again, you should know that when you talk about Nizam ul Mulk, when you talk about Murshid Kuli Khan and when we talk about Sadat Khan, those who established the kingdoms like Hyderabad, like Bengal and Awadh, they were all earlier the Mughal officers and that is why these three states, Bengal, Awadh and Hyderabad, they are considered successor states. Again, a very prominent regional power in 18th century, they were the Marathas. And when you see the location of the Maratha territory, it comprised of all the territories covering the area, a big part of central and Deccan part of India. Certainly the Marathas, they were constantly on rise in 18th century under the leadership of the three big Peshwas. First was Balaji, second was Bajirao and third was Balaji Bajirao, Balaji Bajirao, the three great Peshwas, they had given a massive rise to the influence of the Marathas in 18th century. Again, conceptually for UPSC what you have to understand here that when you see the territory of the Marathas, you can figure out that they would cover a big part of the central and Deccan part of India. But Deccan part of India is always known for the black soil. And black soil is so good for cotton cultivation. After industrial revolution in England, cotton was in huge demand because the backbone of industrial revolution in England was textile revolution. And that is why when the Marathas controlled all these areas, certainly a conflict between the Marathas and the British, it was inevitable because the British would look for the access to this cotton producing area that was controlled by the Marathas. Another very prominent power was in South and it was Mysore. Now Mysore became very prominent under the rule of Hyder Ali and his son Tipu Sultan. Both of them they were excellent military commanders 
at the same time both of them had excellent knowledge of contemporary geopolitics and that is why Mysore gave a very tough resistance to the British East India Company. More than that again for UPSC conceptually that you should know that the geographic location of Mysore was like that, that it would obstruct the spice trade, it would obstruct the spice trade of South and Malabar for the British. And that is why the British, the trader like people, they would always look for control over this area because for South, the spice trade was excellent and the rise of Mysore was obstructing the spice trade for the British. Further, it is very interesting to know that when you see the geographic location of Hyderabad, Mysore and the Maratha territory, you will find that in South, a triangular tussle was always inevitable among the Marathas. Mysore and Nizam or Hyderabad and the East India Company at the center diplomatically was making all the three powers to fight more against each other and eventually the East India Company would dominate all of them. Another regional power that became very prominent by the end of 18th century and remained very prominent almost till the middle of 19th century was the powerful Sikh kingdom of Punjab that comprised of Punjab, part of India, Pakistan, as well as parts of Kashmir. Now, this became very prominent under the rule of Maharaja Ranjit Singh. Maharaja Ranjit Singh, who was excellent military commander. And it is said that he created one army that was so powerful that it would be considered the second best army in Asia. Be careful that the best army in Asia was still that of the East India Company. Apart from these major regional powers that we have discussed in 18th century, there were some small regional powers as well. For example, in the areas around Agra, Mathura, Merat and Aligarh, there was a very small but a very powerful Jat Kingdom. And this Jat Kingdom reached the apex of its glory under Raja Suraj Mal. Raja Suraj Mal. Jat Raja Suraj Mal was so wise that at times he is also considered the Plato of the Jats. Then another regional power that time was the Rohil Khan Kingdom. Just above Avad, you will find the Rohil Khan, Khan Kingdom was there. And this Rohil Khan Kingdom was established by Ali Muhammad. Ali Muhammad. Now Ali Muhammad was Afghan. And that is why the Rohil Khan kingdom is also considered one Afghan kingdom. So, just above Awad, you will find the Afghan Rohilla kingdom that was established by Ali Muhammad. Then, when we talk about Rajputana area, the Rajput kingdoms had played a very significant role in medieval time period, particularly during the Sultna time and the Mughals time. But by this time of 18th century, Politically, they had been very weak and most of the Rajput kingdoms, they were coming under the influence of the Marathas who were constantly on expansion. But still, there were two Rajput kingdoms which were very powerful. These rulers and the kingdoms were, first, there was Ajit Singh, who was ruler of Marwar or Jodhpur, one and the same. Then, the second Rajput ruler who was very powerful was famous Raja Jai Singh of Amir. Famous Raja Jai Singh of Amir. Amir can also be called as Jaipur. Again, in south, there was small but a very powerful state of Travancore. The state of Travancore became very powerful in south under the rule of two excellent rulers, Marthanda Burma and Ram Verma. Both of them, they were excellent rulers. They trained their army on European line and they were excellent rulers. So they also promoted art and culture. So in their times, Malayalam literature started becoming very prominent. Look, another important regional power in South was the state of Karnatik. Karnatik was earlier controlled by Hyderabad. But when Hyderabad started becoming independent of Delhi, by that time, Karnatik also became independent almost of Hyderabad. The state of Karnatik became independent under the rule of Sadatullah Khan. 
सादतुल्ला खान एंड दोस्त अली लेटर इट वुड बिकम द बैटल ग्राउंड फॉर द सुप्रीमेसी बिटवीन द ब्रिटिश एंड द फ्रेंच एंड दैट वुड लीड टू द थ्री कार्नाटिक वॉर्स इन साउथ now is it not very surprising that when we have already discussed about the regional powers of 18th century a candidate may wonder that when so many powers were there where we are talking about the moguls look the moguls were now restricted to the areas around delhi certainly the moguls they had declined and their decline had given rise to this fragmentization of political situation in india leading to the rise of so many regional powers that time now this is what i wanted to discuss with you in this session of history simplified series very soon with the new session of history simplified series i'll be there